In our discussion on radioactive decay and nuclei stability, we said that unstable atoms do not actually undergo radioactive decay and become more stable atoms instantaneously. So recall that in order for an unstable nucleus to actually release some type of particle, for example in the case of the alpha decay, in order for our unstable nucleus to release the alpha particle and become a more stable atom, that alpha particle must actually overcome the attractive strong nuclear forces that hold the alpha particle inside that nucleus. And this, of course, takes time. So this implies that radioactive decay of unstable atoms does not take place instantaneously, but rather it takes some amount of time. And the rate of decay varies for different atoms and different unstable isotopes. So let's begin by actually defining a certain quantity. So in this lecture our goal will be to derive and define an equation known as the radioactive decay equation or the radioactive decay law. So this equation basically describes how many unstable nuclei we have left that have not yet decayed after some time t. It also describes how many nuclei have have actually decayed after some time t. So let's begin by defining a parameter given by delta n. So delta n designates the number of unstable nuclei that have undergone decay in some time given by delta t. So after some time delta t, this many nuclei have actually undergone our decay. Now we see that logically speaking, the number uh, delta n depends on two things. It depends on n, the original number of nuclei. So the number of nuclei that have not yet undergone our radioactive decay at some moment in time. And it also depends on delta t. So delta n is directly proportional to n multiplied by delta t. So basically, the longer we wait, the greater our delta t is, the higher our delta n is, the more nuclei undergo our radioactive decay. Likewise, the more n values, the more unstable nuclei we have in our entire sample n, the more of those atoms will actually undergo go radioactive decay. Now we can actually create an equation, an equality from this proportionality by simply multiplying this by a proportionality constant. Let's say the proportionality constant is given by alpha. So we must plug a negative sign in front of the alpha because as our nuclei uh, undergo decay, the number of unstable nuclei and decrease. So as the time t increases and decreases and that's exactly why we place a negative sign here. So if we rearrange this equation and bring delta t to the left side, we get equation 1. Equation 1 gives us the rate of change of n with respect to t. It gives us the rate of decay and this is equal to negative multiplied by alpha multiplied by n. Now, once again, alpha is known as the proportionality constant or the decay constant and it depends on the type of unstable atom that we are dealing with. The higher our alpha is, the more radioactive our isotope is and the more likely our nuclei will undergo that radioactive decay. Now, once again, the negative sign simply indicates that as the decay occurs, the total number of parent atoms n decreases. So, for example, at some initial time, our n was 6. We had 6 unstable nuclei. After some time passed, given by delta t, we now have 4. So, we see that two of these atoms have undergone radioactive decay. And so, as time increases, our n basically decreases. So, 4 minus 6 gives us a negative value and that's exactly why we place the negative in front of our alpha. Now, 
So let's take equation one and let's take the limit as our delta t approaches zero. So we get the following result. So basically we get the derivative of n with respect to t is equal to negative alpha multiplied by n. Now if we take the absolute value of this quantity that gives us something called the activity of our unstable atom, the activity of our isotope. And the greater the activity is, the more likely our isotope will undergo radioactive decay. So taking the absolute value of the rate of change of this derivative gives us the activity of our sample. Now if we take equation 2 where this is equation 2 and we rearrange it and we express n in terms of t, we get the following result. So dn divided by n is equal to negative alpha dt. Now if we take the integral of both sides, so we integrate the left side from some initial n naught to some final n and the right side from some initial t naught to t, we basically get the following result. Notice n naught is simply the number of parent unstable nuclei at a time t naught of zero seven seconds and n is the number remaining after a time t. So if we actually find the integral we get this result and if we integrate we get this. So basically natural log of n divided by n naught is equal to negative alpha multiplied by t. Now if we take the exponential of both sides we get this quantity and now if we solve for n we get this equation. This equation is known as the radioactive decay law. So basically n which depends on t is equal to n naught the original sample size at a time of zero multiplied by e to the power of negative alpha multiplied by t where alpha is our decay constant. It depends on the type of isotope we are dealing with. Time is our time our n naught is our initial sample size of the unstable isotope at, the, at a time of zero and this gives us the number of remaining unstable uh, isotopes after some time t has passed. Now, if we plot this on the x-y axis, where the x-axis is the time and the y-axis represents the remaining number of unstable isotopes that have not yet undergone decay, we get an exponential term. So we see that radioactive decay of atoms takes place exponentially. So this is known as the radioactive decay law. It describes the decay of unstable stable nuclei, we see that as time progresses, the amount of parent nuclei that decays, decays exponentially.